one? Yeah. All right, good job. Um, so I'm also a slam poet, which uh, you know what poetry is, so if you think of slam poetry as a sort of way more lively and performative version of, uh, of poetry. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about this camp we're running this summer, and then at the end um, I'll do a slam poem for you, just to give you a little taste of what that is. Um, so uh, this summer uh, we are starting a young writers camp at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Uh, it is going to run from June 24th to 28th, from 10 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. Um, those of you interested in writing, any kind of writing, like if you do secret writing that your teachers don't even know about, like in a journal, or if you write sci-fi or fantasy, or you do fan fiction, or you write role play games, or you uh, write songs, or you write rhymes, or you write poetry, or you, write, you want to write an autobiography or a memoir, or you're working on a novel, any sort of thing like that, if you're interested in writing in any way, uh, this might be a place where you'd really love to be. Um, during the course of that week, uh, there's going to be a lot of workshops going on at the, um, at the Young Writers Camp. Some of them will be based on genre, kind of writing, like I just said. Um, some of them will be based on uh, themes, so I'm doing one this summer, uh, it's called Parental Advisory, Explicit Lyrics, Writing About Your Parents. So in that workshop, people, some people might be doing fiction, not actually writing about their own parents, but making up stuff. Some people might be doing sci-fi, some people might be actually writing about their parents, some people writing tribute poems, some people writing not-so-tribute poems. Uh, so that sort of thing, uh, sometimes they're themed. Uh, if you came to the camp, what you would do in the morning is you would come in and kind of select what you wanted to do that day. So, for example, if you hate poetry but you love sci-fi, you know, you'll be able to pursue the kind of writing that you want during the course of that week. Um, no one's going to make you do anything. One of the wonderful things uh, about the camp is that at the end, um, I'm not responsible to demonstrate that you learned anything. <laughs> you will learn things, but I'm not responsible to demonstrate it. Um, and hopefully you'll learn things that uh, are fun for you to learn and things that you want to learn. Obviously, if you're sitting here right now and you're like, oh my goodness, I hate writing, I would rather do anything than write, then of course I'm not going to see you this summer. But if you have had moments like that where you've enjoyed writing, uh, moments where you've created something in writing that you've been excited about, um, you might consider coming to the camp. Um, there are other props to it. Of course it looks good on college resumes and you're going to meet some college professors that can write you letters. And, but don't just come for that reason. You should come because uh, you, know, you want to have a good time with writing and you think that that's possible for you. Um, I'm going to leave some brochures here when I go, and they have a bunch of information in them. Uh, just to highlight a couple of things that are in here. One, my email address is in here, so that if you have questions about the camp, or you want to send me some of your writing, or your parents want to ask me questions about the camp, my email address is in here, as is the website where you can find out more information and register for the camp. Um, I should also say that while there is a cost to the camp, um, if you go home and bring this to your parents and they're like, well, you could go, except for we don't have money for it, um, we will figure out a way to get you there. We do not turn kids away because of money situations, so um, you, all you have to do is send in the registration with a letter, request a scholarship, um, and we'll figure out a way to get you one. So um, I also want to say that you know I grew up in New York, and there wasn't really anything uh, like this when I was growing up. No place. And I, I was writing since I was a little kid. My first poem was published in the Highlights magazine. Uh, you got, any of you guys read highlights when you were little? It was about going to the dentist. Uh, my mom says it's still, she has it on the fridge, it's still the, her favorite poem of mine. Uh, she says that since then my poems have gotten fresh, which means in New York speech like Weisenheimer or sassy. Uh, that's, a, that's a word that uh, one of your teachers gave me earlier. So um, I'm going to do a, a slam poem for you. And if you are interested in slam poetry, not only could you come to the camp this summer and work with me and learn more about it, but you could also form a slam poetry team here at Norris High School. Uh, if you want to Google Louder Than a Bomb Omaha, you can see the, one of the biggest poetry festivals, uh, actually the biggest youth poetry festival in the Midwest, is here in Nebraska. It's in, it's in Omaha every year, Louder Than a Bomb. Uh, and basically we have uh, anywhere between 20 and 30 teams uh, going out and competing against each other in team poetry slams. So we'd love to have a team from Norris High School. So if you want to ask me questions about that, all you need is four kids and a cooperating teacher, and Nebraska Writers Collective will send you uh, send you a coach. So uh, you can Google that if you want to see some performances. I coach the teams at Lincoln North Star and Waverly High School. Um, Lincoln North Star was third in the state this year, which is pretty exciting. So if you like slam poetry, or if you find out today that you like it, uh, that's something you also might consider if you want to come to the camp. So I'm going to do a poem for you. Uh, and I'll just give you a little bit of background so that you understand the poem. Um, any of you ever heard a slam poem before? So just you. Okay, so this, is a, this will be your very first slam poetry experience. At a slam, you have three minutes and ten seconds to do an original piece of work. Uh, you're not allowed to use any props. All you can use is the sound of your own voice uh, you, and, or any sounds you want to make with your body. But you cannot, you know, you can't use a horn or a guitar or a cowboy hat because you have a cowboy poem. You can't do anything like that. Um, you basically just have to do the poem. So I'm going to do a poem for you. Uh, it's called Aunt Liz Whittles a Wooden Dollhouse. 
And it's about, um, well, I grew up uh, sort of a tomboy, and as you can see, I haven't really grown out of that. I have four older brothers, and they were always getting really cool toys when we were little. And I don't know if any of the girls in here have this experience, but sometimes girls' toys, when you're younger, they don't do anything. They don't light up, they don't explode, they don't fly around, they don't crash into things, you know? So my brothers would be getting all this cool stuff, and they'd be like, here's a Cabbage Patch doll. And I'd be like, doesn't do anything. Just looks at you creepily, right? So. Uh, <laughs> My aunts were really anxious that I didn't like enough girls' toys, so every Christmas and every birthday they just give me everything, pink sweaters, you know, blankets with little flowers on it, dolls, Barbies, anything they could think of. And so it was very disappointing, very disappointing. So this is a poem about one of those disappointing birthdays. Here it goes. Aunt Liz widows a wooden dollhouse, which she brings over as a birthday gift and has decorated with a pink bow she has cut and strung out of ribbon. My mother calls me from my room in her most motherly voice. I jump the flight of stairs down to the kitchen where I stop, stare the dollhouse down as if it were the very culprit who moved my WWF wrestling ring somewhere I couldn't ever find it. Say thank you, my mother says, and I don't want to say thank you. I want to say Aunt Liz is not very observant. I want to say I don't have any stupid dolls for the stupid dollhouse. I want to say my whole birthday is ruined by this giant pink bow, which I imagine untying itself and looping around my neck some feminine noose my aunt and mother have planned for me, but... I have my own plans. I do say thank you. Say I can't wait to get it upstairs with my other toys. The women smile. They are surprised and pleased at my soft submission. Weeks later at Sunday brunch, Aunt Liz prances through the front door with cheesecake and strawberries. My mother's bragging how I've spent all my time upstairs, banging and clanking that dollhouse for weeks. And then there are footsteps, and I panic. I know what I'm doing is somehow wrong, but before I have time to cover the dollhouse with a Hello Kitty blanket I also hate, they barge in on the party, and there I am, kneeling in front of the dollhouse, the roof and walls painted green, black, and brown, camouflage for the G.I. Joe men I have strategically placed in the carved out alcoves atop the shingles which are all busted and spread about the floor. The G.I. Joe men have guns. They're pointed at my mother and aunt like little green fingers. My mother doesn't spank me. She goes the guilt trip route instead with, your aunt worked so hard in that dollhouse, and your aunt worked such long hours at the 7-Eleven. I have no counterattacks, and never did apologize. I never again got more than a card from Aunt Liz, who, like my mother, could not pardon such destruction. I suppose I was lucky enough, though. They didn't see the two blonde Barbies given to me by this same Aunt Liz, lying tied up in fishing line on the first floor of the dollhouse. They were my prisoners of war. So there's the poem. That's a slam poem for you. Um, if you guys have any questions you want to ask about slam poetry, about the camp, uh, anything at all you want to ask before I get out of your way so you can go back to work. Nada? Nothing? All right, well, if you think of anything,